Hi guys, welcome back. This video is an update on everything that's been going on with Diddy for the past few days. Although he's locked up, Diddy is still a menace to society, okay? So let's go over the stuff that Diddy's been up to. Prosecutors said Diddy began breaking rules almost as soon as he was detained at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn after his September arrest and their submission to a judge. Prosecutors said Diddy's behavior in jail shows he must remain locked up. Listen, Diddy has tried to reach out to prospective witnesses and influence public opinion from jail in a bid to affect potential jurors for his upcoming SEX trafficking trial. Prosecutors claim in a court filing urging a judge to reject, okay, reject his latest bail request. Prosecutors wrote that a review of recorded jail calls made by Diddy shows he has asked family members to reach out to potential victims and witnesses and has urged them to create narratives to influence the jury pool. They say he also has encouraged marketing strategies to sway public opinion. The defendant has shown repeatedly, even while in custody, that he will fragrantly and repeatedly float rules in order to improperly impact the outcome of his case. The defendant has shown in other words that he cannot be trusted to abide by rules or conditions. So, prosecutors wrote that it could be inferred from his behavior that Diddy wants to blackmail victims and witnesses into silence or into providing testimony helpful to his defense. They said Diddy has enlisted family members to plan and carry out a social media campaign around his birthday with the intention of influencing the potential jury and this criminal proceeding. He encouraged his children to post a video to their social media accounts showing them gathered to celebrate his birthday. Afterward, he monitored the analytics, including audience engagement from the jail, and explicitly discussed with his family how to ensure that the video had his desired effect on potential jury members in this case. That's what the prosecutors are saying. So the video they are referring to is the one where you see Justin, Christian, Quincy, and the twins and the little baby, they sat around a birthday cake while the baby, love, sang happy birthday. And in the clip, Diddy could be heard through the speakerphone. Okay, check it out. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday to Daddy. Happy birthday to Daddy. Yay! I love y'all. I love y'all so much. We love you too. Love you, Papa. I can't wait to see y'all. Can't wait to see y'all. And I'm just gonna say I'm proud of y'all. Proud of y'all, especially the girls. I mean, all of y'all, but. Just for being strong. Thank y'all for being strong. And thank y'all for being by my mm -hmm. side and supporting me. I love y'all. I got the best family in the world. My birthday, I'm happy. Thank you, y'all. Give me this call. Thank you very much. I love y'all. Love, love you, Lord. Can't wait to see you in a couple of days. I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah. I love you too, baby. Is <laughs> <laughs> she eating it? Yo. Yo. Yo, Pops. Hi, we're right here. Chance right here on the phone, too. Pops, uh, love eating all your cake, so you're not going to have none left. <laughs> she's literally digging her face in it. Yeah, you're about to even doing it. Yo, she's face down in the cake right now. Get it, Pops. Get it. 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 Get it.
Happy birthday to my We love you. Chance is right here too. If you can hear on the phone, one more time. Hey, Chance. Happy birthday. Thank you, baby. I love you. Love you too. Miss you. Peace. Okay. Yeah, that video was super cute. That little baby stole the show, and that was the plan. But even though it was cute, we still gonna focus on your. Evil actions, Diddy. So anyway, the government also alleged Diddy, during other calls, made clear his intention to anonymously publish information that he thought would help his defense against the charges. Prosecutors wrote the defendant' efforts to obstruct. The integrity of this proceeding also includes relentless. Relentless, sorry, efforts to contact potential witnesses, including victims of his abuse, who could provide powerful testimony against him. Diddy allegedly paid off one witness after calling and texting her a staggering one hundred and twenty-eight times over four days from his jail cell to persuade. Her to support him. Prosecutors also claimed Diddy used other inmates' phone accounts to make calls to people he is not allowed to speak with, and to avoid law enforcement monitoring. One of them was identified as Witness Two, or Kalena Harper, a singer who was also in one of Diddy's Dirty Money group. Also in the group was Don Richard, who sued Diddy shortly before his arrest, claiming that he sexually assaulted her and threatened her. Prosecutors claim that Diddy contacted Kalena on September 11th, a week before his arrest, and they spoke twice, including discussing her drafting. A statement in his support. Over the next four days, Diddy and Kalena exchanged multiple calls and texts, a hundred and twenty-eight times. Diddy repeatedly asked Kalena when she planned to post her statement, which she eventually did on September thirteenth. After Diddy was in custody. Prison guards recovered notes from his cell during a sweep, which gave a strong inference that the defendant Diddy paid Kalena after she posted her statement. Among the other conduct outlined in the filing, is that Diddy used the phone accounts of eight other inmates in order to call people he was not allowed to. Diddy is also appearing on three-way calls in another breach of prison rules. Prosecutors said it's an attempt to stop law enforcement listening in, and to speak to people not on his contacts list. Prosecutors wrote to obtain or maintain access to other inmates' PAC numbers. The defendant directs. Others to pay the inmates, including through payment processing apps and BOP commissary account deposits. In addition, Diddy is allegedly using a non-authorized messaging app called Contact Me ASAP with two accounts, one of which is using an email address for his son. So Diddy's attorney Mark Agnifilo accused prosecutors of a complete institutional failure that they say could have potentially jeopardized the case during an emergency court hearing in New York on Tuesday. The defense team claimed the rapper's constitutional rights were violated. Last month, when federal investigators seized 19 pages of his notes during a sweep 
of his cell and shared them with prosecutors. Agnifilo claimed the material contained Diddy's handwritten privilege notes to his legal team concerning defense strategies for his upcoming trial. The court heard feds also seized Diddy's thanks to do list, which included telling a family member to find dirt on two alleged victims, as well as pages in which he wrote inspirational quotes for himself. Agnifilo called the pre-planned sweep a pretext for a prison investigator to target Diddy. Judge Aaron Subramanian ordered that the prosecution delete all of its copies of the papers for the time being. The emergency hearing came after the defense filed new court documents revealing they only learned prosecutors were in possession of the privilege material from the October 28th raid on Friday. They said Diddy was not shackled during his court appearance on Tuesday, the first time he has been given such freedoms. After a judge approved a request from his lawyers to remove the shackles, Diddy appeared relaxed and was smiling as he walked in through a side door, cracking jokes with his lawyers and hugging them. Diddy appeared to enjoy working the room, uh -huh, narcissist, craning his neck backwards to see who was in the public gallery and pointing towards a court sketch artist. We know Diddy is media trained, okay? He's going to put on a show to look unbothered. Anyway, prosecutor Mary Slavik told the court that they had acted in a completely appropriate fashion with regards to the documents. She said that the documents were given to a filter team, a filter team, hmm. a separate group of prosecutors who reviewed them to see if they were privileged. Prosecutors said the notes in question included Diddy's thanks to do list, mentions about family members and financial matters and inspirational quotes. One note talked about how he wanted to find dirt on two different victims, and Diddy wrote to a family member about finding everything on one specific victim. The court was told. Judge Subramanian said that the issue with the notes was not their labeling, but the context in which they were taken. Judge Aaron Subramanian ruled they would need to destroy copies of the papers obtained in the search, saying they should not consult the material until he made a final decision on whether they could be used in the trial. He ordered prosecutors to get rid of them. So, a bail hearing is scheduled for tomorrow, Friday. Are we surprised that Diddy is up to no good while he's in jail? Come on. The guy is using other people's phone accounts to contact people he's not supposed to be contacting, to asking his family to find dirt on witnesses. And this is while he's locked up. Now, imagine if he wasn't locked up, the things that he could do, he would do. Okay, this is why he's locked up. He's doing all of this, okay? So Diddy does not deserve bail. No. If this judge, I don't think any judge in their right mind would give Diddy bail. He's not getting bail. But let's just say, let's just say because of all this that's going on, no, he's not getting bail. But if he, let's just say a small percentage that he gets bail, this judge would have so much blood in his hands, okay? Because we know if Diddy gets bail, Diddy is leaving this. Who's coming here? Okay, uh, what was I saying? Uh, Diddy is leaving this country, okay? So I don't think he's getting bail, but <laughs> you will be surprised. And if this judge is part of the system the B system, then 
we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. All right, you guys. I don't want this video to be too long because I saw that Diddy was just sued five more lawsuits <laughs> yesterday. So, yeah, I'm going to do a separate video on these five new lawsuits filed by Tony Busby. That lawyer, man, I don't like him. I don't trust him. He's just, yeah. I'll discuss that on the next video. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And please share the video. Leave comments and let me know what you think. Um, Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.